It's no secret that to become a champion in professional sports, it requires a little something different. And that's exactly the case with the UFC women's flyweight champion, Valentina Shashenko. In this episode, we sit down to find out what it takes to become a champion. And in particular, we discuss how being present but aware of the future is so critical in her success. We stayed away a little bit from the talk of inside the octagon because that has been covered multiple times in many different formats for her. I wanted to find out more outside the octagon, what makes her so special. We discuss travel. We discuss her love for cooking. We discuss how they live life to the fullest and attack everything they do with the utmost focus. We cover everything from her learning the ins and outs of her passion for boating to shooting to how long she will possibly participate in the UFC. I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope you do as well. This is the No Excuse to Miss podcast. Welcome to the No Excuse to Miss podcast. I'm your host, Scott Volkortson. And this week's episode is one I've been looking forward to for quite a while. It's somebody that needs no introduction. She's the UFC women's flyweight champion, Valentina Shashenko. How are you doing today, Valentina? <laughs> doing great. Amazing. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say thank you for taking the time to do this. It's a true honor to get you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. So for the few people that don't know, can you just give us a little bit of a background of how you got into fighting and your progression into the UFC? Oh, it's 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 really big topic, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I can go forever like how I started, what is my lifestyle and everything. But like uh, I start very young age when I was five years old. All my life I practice martial arts. For me, martial arts it's just uh, it's way more than sport. It's my lifestyle, my uh, philosophy, my everything, and I'm very happy that. Um, I came, I, I'm coming from a uh, sport family because uh, my sister, she's mixed martial artist. Antonina, she's um, also UFC fighter. Uh, our mom, she's fighter. She's president of Kyrgyzstan Muay Thai Federation and she's black belt of Taekwondo, uh, Sir Dan. So uh, it's kind of like mm, family tradition, be martial artist. <laughs> <laughs> And the one thing unique that you do is, I believe if I have this right, you've had basically one coach for most of your career. Yes, exactly. When I started uh, uh, at a young age, five years old, uh, my mom put myself and my sister first, my sisters and myself, to the uh, a school of our coach, Pavel Fedotov. And since then, our like journey, it's continuing all together. And it's uh, the most uh, beautiful thing that I, I think could happen with a fighter to, to find the right yeah. coach. <laughs> um, so do you think the consistency that you've had with the single coach throughout helps because it seems like a lot of times people whether it's fighting or anywhere as soon as they don't see the results they're looking for as soon as they encounter a struggle i think it's kind of like combination because definitely if uh, uh your coach cannot give you more you definitely some fighters they are looking for more because they okay. feel that's not enough but uh this is not my case because <laughs> my coach yeah, he's every time uh, giving me more and uh, teaching me more and um, we are not stopping to uh, make progress every single day even now uh, from fight to fight every single day we are looking for being better and this is great and i think it's kind of like combination uh, good coach uh, willing to train and give your best and definitely some kind of like uh, nature gifts that uh, everyone has like everyone has but different ones and it's uh, it's everything has to match well it seems like you've definitely done that which is pretty cool the the one thing that i wanted to ask is it seems like you even though you've achieved the top that you still are very good at living in the present and not looking forward not looking past a fight is how do you maintain like that presence or like that hunger with everything you've accomplished I think it's a part of um, 
the experience what I gained through the years because uh, I am so many years competing different competition different like uh, fighters i fought different opponents and definitely through the years i completely can see and understand what is good what is bad right <laughs> and what i have to do to maintain uh, the same uh, inside feeling to keep uh my motivation on and also to stay the champion because uh, um, people they are losing losing their their fight or motivation i think only because they um sometimes they don't know what next and what to expect and uh, how to react but if you know you kind of like prepared for that you are ready and you know what uh what will be good to do and what you have to do to maintain it in my um, like experience I completely know that fight is real and to have a successful fight you have to train very hard and be the most uh, like um, uh, easy person in the world without thinking that okay I'm the champion and everyone uh, I'm stepping stepping inside the octagon and everyone like, okay Valentina we are losing to you straight away <laughs> because you're a champion no it's not gonna not gonna happen to make that happen you're gonna train very hard and you think i know that you are very big into like outside the octagon doing things like in nature and pushing yourself like you know we were at the range earlier today doing that do you think taking like the time away from like being out here training i, mean, I know you still train all the time but do you think like getting out in nature and traveling and doing some of that helps like maintain your focus when it comes back time to be in camp? You know, uh, definitely. I never stop my trainings. Never. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no matter. Um, definitely, it's kind of like intensity of the training. It depends. If I am in training camp, we train very hard. Right now, I can uh, like intensity of my training put a little bit like slow down and do it less. But I never stop. I never stop okay. training. But I believe that. Uh, combination of your ability to stay focused for the fight and after the fight know how to not to relax but uh, joy have joy from everything what you do it's kind of like helping to each other because I know if I not gonna rest enough for the next training camp, I wouldn't be able to train the same hard as I trained before. That's why I have to keep this uh, balance and every time like uh, be ready for training camp, be ready and want it to train hard and hard all the time. And definitely um, traveling, shooting, uh, doing like all uh, nature activities, it's my lifestyle. I cannot imagine being like not doing that because it would be not me. It's definitely a huge part of me. Well, I think I've heard you say before that, you know, we only get one life to be here that you don't understand how people can't live it to the fullest with, you know, because I think it'd be easy for a lot of people in your shoes after a fight to just take it easy and be like, I'm just going to kick back and not do yeah. anything. But like, you know, typically after you and your sister fight, because you seem like you always fight in consecutive week or back to back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> close proximity to each other. So, but then after that, it seems like you guys are on the road, you know, traveling, hitting different parts of the country. Um, I think it's the best. I think it's the best because, for example, um, we had um, lately we had a lot of travels in United States, and it's not just travels. Uh, it was different travels. First, it's, for example, by car. And our travels, it can uh, last for two and two and a half months. Last summer, we spent uh, almost all summer living on board, like on the boat, traveling, um, navigating through Puget Sound. And it's different, different type of travel. Definitely, it's nothing um, what people like imagine being on board it's kind of like relaxing chilling drinking wine whatever <laughs> no but it's uh, also different life because uh, i had to learn i had to learn tides currents i have I had to learn like how my boat is working and uh, be able to um, not 
as a professional level, but level, but some kind of know how your engine work because uh, in the sea when you are like far from the shore and something happen, you have to know how to fix it. And definitely, it's nothing relaxing. It's kind of like you every time you have to put your mind to think what to do, how to uh, do it right to avoid all problems what can happen in the water, right? But in the same time, it's so much new knowledge that you get. And um, it's amazing just to have this uh, ability to be on water, know different people who live this life like for so many years, who dedicate their life for um, um, sailing or like um, motorboat. Like it's amazing. And I really feel like blessed to have um, to live the life what we are living. Well, and so you do that and your sister is, I believe, a commercial pilot. Right? She's a commercial pilot. A commercial pilot. Yes. So she got that license. So obviously you got everything you guys do is to the fullest. Is that something that like you learn from? Did that come from your mom or is it something that you guys just kind of learned on your own? Um, I think it's kind of like uh, figuring out through the life. Definitely big uh, part, like it's, um, uh, I would say, Pavel, our coach, he showed as well. And um, definitely, I would say it's, for example, if you're speaking about Antonina, my sister, she, um, since a childhood, we was reading a lot of books, uh, for example, Antoine um, de saint Exupéry uh, about the um, uh, pilot about how like and you know the style what he's writing it's um, so charming it's so like uh, amazing and um, Antonina kind of like uh, he got hooked <laughs> since <laughs> the childhood yeah me too me as well but uh, when Pavel started to um, uh, to um, learn flying uh, he's also com uh, ho also private pilot oh. so when he started Antonina was like uh, also felt that uh, this is something she would like to do and a few years ago she started to learn how to fly she got her private license it's a lot of study and she was like studying hours hours and hours through the day it's kind of like but she liked it and this is the huge the biggest motivation because she is kind of like oh it's hard it's so sometimes sometimes it was days then she didn't feel like uh, that everything she's doing it's perfect and but this is not the reason to turn away and say okay it's not my thing maybe i <laughs> should try different no she knew that this is her thing it's just only days it not uh, looks like like today is not happening yeah. today she cannot uh complete what she wanted but she was like uh, very consistent with that and she got her private license and she got her instrumental ratings and she got her commercial license she joined um civil air patrol she's first lieutenant now <laughs> so she kind of like uh so much she feels so happy in this flying world and i think it all depends how full you take it all depends what you take if you really enjoy and really feel happy about what you are doing you will do like uh, you will try to do your best well i think that's evident because if you look at like everything you do you know following your instagram or your social media from you know Today on the range, you proved you're very proficient on the range. You know, you can see your videos, you're into dance, you know, so many different things. And it looks like everything that you do, you take it to the, like. I try. <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking about it on the way back from the range today. And, you know, even the way you guys operated there, it wasn't like, oh, we'll just go out and shoot. Everything was like done with a purpose. Like. You know, you your coach are going back and forth and be like, okay, I'm going to practice this or I'm going to do this. Well, you, you know, it's also part that I was uh, learned through the all my practice in these firearms that yeah, everything, no matter what you are uh, supposed to do, picture or whatever, you have to. It's not only firearms, it's everything. You have to treat everything with a lot of respect and be in the present, be in the moment without, uh, with your mind being at that moment and thinking about what you are doing. Because it's it's the same, for example, on the training. Uh, when we do martial arts, um, 
the most uh, frequent time when injury happen it's during the training why it's happen because uh, fighter sportsman it was distracted at this moment uh, his mind was like in other side maybe like has like family issues or something like that uh, job issues something like that and he brought all this together with him or her in the gym and started to train with this like thoughts in his head and started like and this is what kind of like why injury happened but how to prevent it be in the present you have to really focus on what you are doing and treat everything with a lot of respect this is my mindset that no matter what you are doing you have to completely put your focus on what you are doing that is a, 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 in my opinion it's key for success <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like that's harder and harder for people to do in today's world like do you practice mindful training or mindfulness training or like uh, meditation or anything to help like be in the present uh, no, I think um, I don't do special training. Okay, this okay. is my meditation time. <laughs> I like one hour, forget about but, but it. But you're able to when you get in the gym or on the range or this anywhere. This is the training. This is this is like training in training. It's like two in one. And it's the same like what I uh, just now, just now was we are talking about. You're coming to the gym and you're focusing on the present. How you're focusing on your warming up. You're focusing on your stretching and do like, it's kind of like training in the training. It's both. That's awesome because like I said, I, I struggle personally trying to stay in the moment many times. And Sometimes I, it's very hard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you uh, know, you know, I, I noticed that um, sometimes even like we are uh, during the night, like having like um, good evening time and you are just enjoying the uh, everything, the atmosphere of the evening, uh, the smell of the air and everything. And you can kind of like cannot uh, concentrate on that because it's too much distraction. Someone is speaking to you, you have to focus on taking picture or something <laughs> like that, or it's too loud or it's too music. But sometimes you have to just disconnect everything and just like breathe and think, okay, here I am. This is my moment. I want to remember this moment. And it's take like a few minutes for you to um, understand where are you. And um, this is kind of, uh, kind of like the best practice what you can <laughs> and this is what I do. <laughs> but, and that's what I was curious about because it looks like you're always in the present moment and completely focused at the task at hand, which is, you know, admirable because like I said, it is so hard for so many people to do. The uh, switching gears a little bit, I also wanted to talk to you. You did the SIG Hunter Games this past year. Yes. How was that experience? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best ones. It's, you know, I really enjoy being there. Um, it, uh, the competition by itself, it was combination of um, being in a good physical shape. You have to be in the good physical shape because because if it, it's a lot of walking. Eight hours of walk in the elevation <laughs> up to 9,000 feet <laughs> and nonstop, no rest. And at the same time, you have to shoot very precise. You have to shoot exactly and get your points to in order to win the competition, right? But the, um, it's all the, uh, the most beautiful part, all people who was participating in the event all shooters um even like some some of them was like uh uh doing different like job like primary but they are all shooters they were, were practicing through the like uh, all their life some and it's amazing because it's kind of like seeing in common that you are sharing is with everyone and after the competition we had like amazing dinner and amazing food so tasty barbecue and everything <laughs> and just sharing the stories and um, knowing each other and it's kind of like things that connecting people and uh, I think it's a, the best it's kind of like I would like to have um to be uh, in the second hunter games in the <laughs> in next year so this is I looking forward too much <laughs> well and I think that's something awesome that they're doing is bringing people like that together because I know we've talked a lot about it that the future of our industry is building and it always has been but building those networks and those relationships 
And like you said, a lot of, you know, the competition was fun, everything that way. But the stuff that was done at night, you know, talking to the other like-minded people is always, nothing really replaces that. It's true. It's completely, yeah, it's, uh, it's just amazing to have this like spirit and, um, yeah, we spent there how many, uh, three, four days and the competition, like coming there and, you know, like we were sleeping in tents under the sky <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of like wild, um, feeling of the nature. Definitely, definitely. It's not that wild because still we, we were like, take <laughs> the, take it care, very good care. And, um, but uh, it was amazing. Just good. Is the shooting aspect, have you always been a shooter or is that something you start doing later on? I start to shoot maybe in uh, 2009, 10. Uh, my coach introduced uh, like shooting world to us and because he was in uh, Soviet army, oh. tank commander, Pavel. Yeah. And um, yeah, we started to shoot and then uh, in Russia, then we, um, when we lived in South America, we um, started to compete in um, defensive shooting competition like IPSC, IDPA. And um, yeah, and since then it was forever. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I very enjoy my time on the shooting range because uh, for me, guns, it's culture, it's human culture and um, all weapons like firearms, whatever, it's uh, like um, we have uh, monuments, like historical monuments. Yes. And this is the same because you can see the beauty of design. It's like combination beauty on design and all the uh, like what people have to put uh, their knowledge in the mechanical stuff like to make it work perfectly and even design of the bullets it's like perfection style so it's kind, kind of like combination of everything and for me it's much more just uh, for example self-defense it's just it's uh, way much more than just to come to the range and shoot because shooting teach you how to respect a gun, how to respect everything. When you are coming to the range, you just cannot come there and say like, okay, I'm here, I'm gonna yeah. shoot it, <laughs> pointing gun all over. And you have to have that focus you were talking about. Exactly. You know, and that's how accidents happen is when. Exactly, so it teach you that you have to uh, put your mind exactly in what you are doing. And uh, yeah, and this is kind of like uh, working so good for my martial arts as well, because it's teach me how to be focused, present, and exactly what you are doing right now. Is there anything that coach can't do? <laughs> <laughs> the idea of like uh, martial, you know, you know, the martial artist to be uh, like complete martial artist. And it's kind of like a mixed martial artist because he can fight in stand up, fight in the ground, uh, do like whatever technique has to do to win the fight. It's mixed martial artist. But if we are looking more forward, it we have to think about what people, what a person can uh, learn more. Shooting definitely. Um, driving a car, driving motorcycle, driving um, boats, Bo yeah. flying planes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of things to be the universal, to be a James Bond. You have to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, and even, so for those that don't know, you were part of the movie Bruise that's coming up. Exactly. How was that? Have you been involved with any movies prior to that one? Or uh, is this something brand new? Bruised, it's a big movie for me. And yeah, definitely, I looking forward to the premiere, and it's gonna be very soon, uh, in November. I think in November twenty five, it's already like worldwide premiere on okay. Netflix. But we will have um, um, like few days before the official premiere for the movie in Los Angeles, and yeah, definitely we were working um, a lot for the movie, and I was so happy to work with Halle Berry because she's amazing. <laughs> she's, um, she's an amazing person. She's very sweet, very kind, very um, wise. And um, it was, you know, very easy to work with her because she has 
kind of like write words because she's director there okay. and director and the star in the film like lead actor so it was kind of like double pressure but at the same time she know and how to approach for the other her like um, troop right for other people and um she has an idea what she want to show in her movie and she's every time like uh, have right words and you know exactly what she want <laughs> and it's like very sweet because she's not putting any pressure but exactly what you need and it's I, I think it's amazing quality for a director because um, yeah you kind of like it's like a coach coach have to know how to approach to each fighter because we are all different and um, we need to our personal like we need our personal approach and this is the director of the movie has to have uh, like personal approach for each one or each actor and this is i really appreciate that she has so i look in very much forward to the <laughs> movie premiere <laughs> do you hope you do more movies in the future definitely i um i would love i would love to do more movies and uh, hopefully it's gonna happen because i'm ready for it <laughs> <laughs> And I know you like to live in the present and not think about the future, but have you ever given any thought on how long you think you can compete at the highest level? Um, you know, I kind of like um, make correction. I know how to appreciate the present, but okay. it doesn't mean I don't think about the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like I was like, hmm, not thinking about future. <laughs> no, I definitely okay. do think about future, but it doesn't mean that... Um, I focused and I crazy only about the future okay. because if you are living only about thinking what's going to be tomorrow, you are losing your moment for today. But um, you just have to kind of like uh, trying to figure out how to live thinking about future, but not losing the right uh, present yeah. moment. This is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but definitely I think about the future. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I don't know how for how long I want to compete more. I just want to compete and um, perform, do my arts, what I do right now in the best way, way what I can. And I want to see where is my limits. <laughs> and no one don't know where is their limits. Yeah. And anyone could say, oh, it's certain age like that or like that, but no one know exactly. And I think everyone's limit it's in the head first. If you put like, okay, I'm gonna fight before this age, it's already you're going slowly to your end <laughs> of your career. I don't want to put that. I don't want to uh, think about ending of the of my career. I just want to be better each single day and give in the fight best of me, best part of me, and see for how long I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind to do it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I assume, is that something like when you're traveling all the time that it's hard to stay in your route? You know, for a lot of, for us mortals over here, when we travel, when I travel, it's hard to like stay in a routine. It's hard to train, hard it's, to stay on nutrition. It's really hard. It's very hard. It's kind of like, but um, all this hard thing um, that you are not comfortable, that you are away from your, from your comfort zone, it's make you stronger. <laughs> if you can manage that in the difficult situations, difficult positions, so you just good. You know that you can do anything. And um, definitely when you have uh, a target, for example, you're a fighter, you're thinking about like uh, being um, better every single day, definitely you have a mission. And you slowly, no matter what you're doing, you're going to this mission. And I noticed that for me, uh, when I'm training camp, uh, I have my missions that I have to train and hard train. It's gonna kind of like is it to be on a diet then for example i'm out of competition and we go on travel and it's very hard to keep diets that way <laughs> well, i have to train more <laughs> and we were talking earlier that you love to like bake and do different things i do love bake i uh, i cannot say that i bake a lot of stuff uh my favorite part is it's uh, bread 
to bake a bread. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like ciabatta bread, the simple one, but this is kind of like what I really love to do. And I like to mix some some different like gray uh, flour and buckwheat flour and like try to find my own recipes. So this is what I really like. But in general, I think what I think about cooking, it's um, when you're cooking with your friends and you just um, experience so good energy because cooking by itself is given like so positive energy and i really enjoy to spend time with friends cooking like having good conversation without rush rush without uh, not like running to some place and just like enjoy enjoy the time <laughs> so one question for like people that I'm trying to think of the right way to word this but there's people that will like not try new things because they're worried about failing. It seems like everything you do, you're not worried about failing in any way. And you love the challenge of taking on something new, whether like you said with the boat earlier or Antonia's, you know, flying different things. How would you tell people that like have those fears of trying new things? You know, um, I would say I add a little bit like um, I, I'm not going to try new thing just for trying. Um, there is so many different things in the world that um, you have to really choose what you're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that you, you have to try everything yeah. because it, it, there is good things and bad things. You don't have to try bad things, yeah, right? right. <laughs> and, but it seems like you're not afraid of failure at all. Mm, or at the, least the most important is the journey, right? Yes. But if uh, anything you have feeling that it's kind of like you like to do it and you are willing to put your time and dedicate your time to explore more in this area, you really don't uh, think about failures. If you're going to start anything thinking about failures, it's not going to bring <laughs> any success, right? When right. you are starting to do something like same, like uh, uh, you are thinking about how you gonna be good at that and what you have to, uh, what sacrifice you have to put there. But you are thinking about being better. You are not thinking about failure. This is, I think <laughs> it's natural in everyone's brain. It's already like a program, what we have human program, program because um, this is how like, um, like, um, development uh, like in the world how we how we see progress and everything progress in the uh, smartphones yeah. <laughs> what it was like 10 years ago and now it's like not because uh, people was thinking about failure no because their program it's like um, set it up to success <laughs> <laughs> do you know when what's next for you in the UFC or is that not uh, for now, uh, for now, I just fought recently. It's like uh, almost just months, think, months, months and yeah, a half. About a month ago as yeah. we're recording this. And it's um, still too early to think about <laughs> what is next fight. But um, as I every time saying, I'm ready for um, no matter when to fight, no matter who to fight. I just um, um, want to enjoy my free time for now and do as much travel as what I can. <laughs> and definitely I am ready for anything that uh, UFC gonna put me in front of me like next challenge. Do you have any travel coming up that you're excited about? Oh, yes, we're going to have some travels like um, like job travels. And then we are thinking uh, about some personal travels, but it's still secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for taking time today to do mm -hmm. this. I've enjoyed it. We enjoy watching you fight. I enjoy thank listening you. to your mindset on being present, you know, trying new things. I think there's a lot we can learn from that because like, you know, you compete at the absolute highest level, one of the best that's ever done it, but yeah, you still have the ability to go do all these other things, which is so inspiring <laughs> to see. So I just want to say thank you for taking the time to come and do this today. 
Thank you, Scott. It was my complete pleasure because uh, we shoot in the morning. What can can be better? What could be like the <laughs> best start of the day? Spend it in the ranch, <laughs> like shooting guns. Yeah. It was amazing. And definitely I enjoy our con conversation as well. And uh, looking forward to everything what uh, we're going to do together to yeah. share like our like everything. And yeah, um, amazing. Thank you well, for having me. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to it because like I said, it was really cool to watch how proficient you were on the range. And you know, <laughs> so... You know, hopefully we can get back out there again soon. We will. It's yeah. uh, it's not maybe, it's we will. <laughs> we will. And I also want to say a special thank you to John Bartolo for letting us use his studio out here in Las Vegas. Yep. Uh, here he yeah. is. <laughs> 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 and and bringing the donuts. Like. <laughs> bringing the donuts. And providing the food. The food. <laughs> this, that, and in all sincerity, thank you, John. I appreciate you letting us do this here. And once again, thank you for your time. I know it's valuable you, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.